Hi, we've already gone over basic electricity, uh, the difference between series and parallel, and the components that are common to most systems. Now we're going to go over a generic electrical system. I have specifically chosen one that is that contains all of the elements that you will typically find in an aircraft system. I've chosen this generic electrical system out of your textbook because it contains all of the elements that are typically found in most aviation electrical systems. Even as you get to larger, more complex aircraft, these basic elements will still be present in some form, and then they simply add on more subsystems beyond this. When I analyze an electrical system, I usually start simply by turning it on. What I've done here is highlight the circuit that energizes the master relay and provides electricity to the bus. So if we trace that from the battery, moving in a conventional direction from the positive terminal of the battery, we see that electricity can flow through the electromagnet in the master solenoid or master relay through the master switch, which is labeled BAT in this case, and to ground. So we have a complete circuit there. That means that the electromagnet in the master solenoid has now been energized and will pull the switch closed. That completes the circuit across these two points. So now we have a flow of electricity represented in blue here that is of a higher amperage that goes from the battery through the, the master relay up uh, it touches the starter solenoid, by the way, in most small general aviation aircraft, but it has nothing to do with it. It's, it was, it's just usually a handy route to take. And then it goes from there up through the ammeter shunt, which is what makes the ammeter work, and into the bus. Now, we are pumping electricity from the battery into the bus. And when electricity flows in that direction, the ammeter will, will show us a discharge. So now we have the main bus activated and we can start doing some other things. The next thing that we typically want to do is start the aircraft. So in this case, I have closed a starter switch here. Um, and so power comes off of the bus, goes through the starter switch, which is typically a key in Cessnas and Pipers. Uh, and that goes, provides positive power into the starter solenoid electromagnet and energizes that magnet, which pulls down on the starter solenoid main switch and connects these two terminals. That allows a whole bunch of amperage to flow from here, where it's already been provided by the master relay, up to the starter motor for starting. Once the engine is running, we release the key and that circuit turns back off again. The next thing that happens is we turn on the alternator switch and provide uh, power to the voltage regulator. That tells the voltage regulator that we would like the charging system to begin charging. It takes a look at the system amp voltage through either that wire or one of the other wires that is attached to it. And if it senses the system voltage too low, as it would be in this case, it sends out electricity through the field circuit. The field circuit is variable voltage that goes into the electromagnet in the alternator, creating a magnetic field, hence its name. Since the engine is turning the alternator, when we create that electromagnetic field, the alternator starts putting out electricity 
out of the B terminal, B stands for battery, it goes back into the main bus. And then, since it is at a higher voltage than the battery, electricity flows from the bus now through the ammeter, back through the battery master relay, and back into the battery. Since electricity is now flowing from the bus back to the battery, the ammeter will show a charge. Once that's done, we've got an electrical system that is all lit up. The charging system has been activated to start recharging the battery, and it will continue to maintain uh, whatever voltage is necessary to run our system and keep the battery charged, and we can start turning things on. For instance, we could turn on the avionics master to light up the avionics bus or whatever other devices that we think that we need. So those are the basic elements that you're going to find in most electrical systems. General aviation electrical systems will look very similar to this and we'll go through some of those in class so that you can practice picking out each of those elements. As you get into bigger aircraft, these elements will still be present, though they may look a little bit different, um, and there will be other subsystems added on, such as inverters supplying an alternating current uh, section of the electrical system and so forth. It still boils down to the five things, though. First, what is it? You need to be able to describe the electrical system in whatever aircraft you're flying including what the voltage is, whether they're, it's AC or DC or both, um, what type of battery it has uh, installed, and what the sources are for keeping that battery charged, including uh, external power, if applicable to your aircraft type. Then how does it work? You need to be able to identify and explain how each circuit works at least as it is described in the manual for the pilot. You don't need to know things down to a wiring diagram maintenance level, but you do need to understand everything that is in the diagram that is in your pilot operating handbook. And that includes all of the devices that are depicted in the diagram, how they interact with one another and function, and how to operate them. How does it fail? You need to be able to describe and explain some of the common failure modes for your system. For instance, the alternator itself fails, or the regulator fails, or there's an overload in a circuit. How does that appear in the cockpit? So that's how do I know? How do these failures show up in the cockpit? And where can I verify those failures? And then finally, what do I do next? There are some electrical failures that may have some memory items associated with them because there might be a risk of fire or overheat. You need to be proficient with those and you need to be familiar with where to find the checklists for all the other electrical system faults. It's very important that you as a pilot are familiar with the specific electrical system in each of the aircraft that you fly. It's not hard if you boil it down to the basic elements that we just covered and then apply that to each aircraft type that you encounter.